Welcome to the Podness with Face, Pat, and Tiz. Two groups who are hey. currently faced some alleged uh, saying fuck Gertrude and fuck a whole lot of people uh, are YSL and YFN down here in Georgia. Um, yeah. as you know, they have been brought up on some RICO charges. Um, the attorney general down here saying that more attack indictments are to come. And, you know, yeah. uh, you've seen a lot of rappers um, lately getting swept up in all kinds of uh, indictments for a whole slew of different things. Um, so what I wanted to bring to y'all tonight, man, it got me kind of thinking, uh, I, I was watching a couple of people and, uh, a certain point of view kind of stuck out to me, but I wanted to bring this question here. Is it a case of hip hop police right now? Like kind of targeting rappers? Yeah. Or is it just yeah. not, or, or are communities just tired of nonsense? Um, are, are hip hop police real and are they an issue? I'm going to say, I think it's a, a collaboration of both. People are tired of it in the community. And yeah, it is, I would say, quote unquote, hip hop police out there. Um, I believe as the, the culture expanded and the lingo changed, the different different forces and different um, bureaus had to hire individuals who could understand the lingo and, and try to transition and and teach the other officers that stuff so they probably do have a division out there that's focused on that that hip-hop culture because they do report and as they say we 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 talk about our lives we live so okay the police always got to be one step ahead so so you have about your life to live let's focus on your lives let's let's listen and really key in let's get somebody in your generation most likely there's probably people in that generation fresh out of school working on a hip-hop police you remember just with an older nigga, the older dude, excuse me, is being as, as, as the the lead. Y'all put some shit out there. Every video y'all watch, they own it. Every record they put out, yeah, they own it. Looking for some for you to indict yourself on it. Yeah. Hey, and put along with the the constant violence in the communities and the outcry and the, the quote unquote Black Lives Matter movement, quote unquote. Once again, I say quote unquote. Um, but at the end they. A lot of people in the communities is worldwide, it, it, especially in America. It, it's it's really really poignant that violence is out of hand, especially with the culture. So I say put two and two together. Yeah, it ain't no neighborhood watch no more. It's internet watch. It's it's hip hop watch. So I believe it's it's a capital lab collaboration of both. You be- you believe it for what? It's a collaboration of both of them. Oh, okay. I was like, hell is a capital lava going on? Do the cover? That shit real, too. It is stupid cover. They went out in the country and shit. That's funny. <laughs> Chupa I believe it. Back in the black community. <laughs> <laughs> oh man but uh on a serious note uh pat what do you do you think the hip-hop it, police are real or do you think that uh it's something it, it's, that's causing this it's, recent slew? i don't think it's like like a like a fbi agency that just monitor hip-hop but i have um, I have known of like stories where there's an actual hip hop task force where they look at hip hop. Um, they they look at like visuals of hip hop and stuff like that, and listen to rap music or whatever. They actually target certain rappers. It's been like um, cases like like Remy Ma when or whatever they uh, they targeted her, used her lyrics. Same thing with Fifty Cent. Uh, recently, Takashi. <laughs> so, this, to be honest, to be honest with you, I would expect it to be one at this point. 
as far as like a, a hip hop task force. So as much as as um, illegal activities and stuff like that is promoted in media, expect it to be a hip hop task force at this point. When I, um, that's why if it wasn't one that it wouldn't be a purpose for like Jay-Z and Meek Mills to have that that bill to like guard you know hip-hop lyrics as just art instead of something to put um as evidence in the court or whatever so like it like in order for I would say in order for them to use hip-hop lyrics or whatever they have to know to actually go to them. Like, and, and and at this time, with as far as lyrics, as far as rap has been uh, at this point, I would expect them to have a task force, especially if they're looking at certain rappers or whatever. And then I also feel like certain rappers ignorantly and arrogantly put a target on their back. That's really- Period. Like this is just all like, how much do you think you can pull off? Like, it doesn't make sense to me. It's like one point they want all their listeners and all the people that's in the culture to believe that everything they say in the raps is real. And then when you go to court, after you done had all these interviews about saying, yeah, I'm, I'm my life real, I, I spit real stuff, and this, that, the third. And then you're in the court and they put that same video saying, yeah, I'm my life real, all the things I say in my raps are real. You kind of you're setting your own self up, you know what I'm saying? So like now is a thing in the culture that we probably should have been corrected a long time ago. Yeah, and that's why I go with it too. I I definitely agree with that part. Um, I really do feel like hip hop police are no. I feel like what's happening is you got a group of black men that are trying. To, that say they trying to leave a certain lifestyle, but they not leaving it. So they creating a reputation that makes it easier for these type of things to happen. Like when mm-hmm. you, things don't happen to people when they're not in position for them to happen. Like for anything mm-hmm. to happen to you, you have to be in a certain position for a brick to fall off of a construction site and hit you in the head. You gotta be in the proximity of that construction site. That shit ain't gonna happen if you way across the other side of the world, across town or some shit. You feel me? So like these indictments ain't coming just because like they might they might not even be doing nothing necessarily right now, but they've built up a reputation that where they keep reinforcing the same thing about themselves. And if you keep on telling somebody that that's who you are, people gonna believe it. Mm-hmm. If you walk around every day with a briefcase and a suit, you say, I'm a businessman. At some point, people gonna believe it. Now, whether that's true or not, who knows? But people gonna believe it. Because the mm-hmm. evidence is there to them, like you're you're presenting as that every time. So if you go around presenting as a killer, even after you've left that type of a lifestyle alone, when things go wrong in that type of a fashion where it's involving that type of a lifestyle that you are coming from and still talking about constantly, not as if it's in the past tense either, as if it's yesterday. Mm-hmm. Your reputation says that you are likely to, at some point, be a part of some fuck shit involving mm-hmm. said thing, and and I think that's really what it is. Um, but that does you know, um, question to y'all. Like, uh, I personally feel like it's a responsibility, accountability thing. Like, and I feel like it's all of us. Like, don't get me wrong, I like certain music, but I can also listen to some shit like Post Malone and uh, what the girl Doja Cat. I like you. I didn't. Like, I just like good music. Like, if the music jam and I, I rock with it. You feel me? You got a good beat. Like, I, I'm at this point. Like, music for me is more therapeutic than anything. Like, I'm listening mm-hmm. to the pure. Like, how does it make me feel? If it made me feel good. We're gonna put that shit on. You feel me? So, like, I think we are all, at some degree, culpable. Obviously, the rappers themselves are the most culpable because they're actually perpetuating the shit in their legs, but then they're doing the dumb shit of actually hanging around that element and mm-hmm. at times engaging in certain things that put you more at risk to and then be involved in some other shit. Like, if you're hanging around a bunch of people who still selling drugs and if you yourself are still dabbling in that 
at some point you're going to come across a robber, a jacker, a killer, a murderer. Like these are all people who also move in those circles. So like you look at a dude like even the bank roll fresh, like you're doing this, but you still got one foot in, one foot out. You know what I mean? You're still immersing yourself in that environment. So the shit from that environment going to come to you. That's just common damn sense. You know what I mean? I think we all couple, because we look at it and we perpetuate this music. We rock it. We, we, we get as a, and I, and when I say we, I'm talking about like, you know, us as a, a public that consumes music, you know, in general, like we have a habit of like propping, like, like down in certain images and propping other images up. Mm -hmm. When they when they both could be have their own space, but it makes it to the point where like I believe a lot of these young cats, when they do this ad, right, I'm gonna leave the street. They feel like if I do not put this certain type of content out, there's no way the record label is gonna push my shit. Yeah. And at the same time, that's the record label is also part of that. Because in a lot of cases, they're not going to push their shit. Um, the, another thing is that uh, these agencies don't wait till you do something the first time. They wait until you do multiple things so they'll build up a case for you uh, mm -hmm. in general. And I really think in the YSL, y, um, YFN case is that when, when Young Doug took all those guys out of jail, I think that put the target on his back right then and there. Don't get me wrong. I think it's a good thing that he did it. But at the same time, there's somebody in those agencies like, we worked hard to get all them niggas in jail, and he took all our good work away. That's we got to get some niggas back in them jails. Because the jail <laughs> and prison is an industry. It's my and it, that part. Yeah, and that part. it's an industry. And you went in and took, I don't know, I think it was like about, about damn near 50 people out of the industry. Yeah. And set free or whatever. How, it, how, it, it's the same thing. Now now the uh, the slave owners want the reparations that uh, Abraham Lincoln told them that they were going to get. Now, my question <laughs> is, with that, with the releasing of that terrorist act shit, now all gangs, like all gangs are considered terrorist groups. Do you think that's also influencing these indictments coming out? Because um, all these groups, these groups are coming out like their their image is like a gang type image. You feel me? Um, we go by this. We're we're called this, um, and they have the activities of a criminal element or or a gang element. They come out wearing the same type of colors, even if they're not a, a quote unquote established gang they will still fall into that, in that realm of that bill, which would entice the indictment even more. I think it's past even that. I think it's the fact that they're actually affiliated with actual street gangs, even when they change. So like, YSL mm -hmm. is affiliated with a blood gang. Yeah. So is YFN. So like, and they, they have some loose ties to certain crip sets on the YFN set, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's some, if I'm not mistaken, I might be wrong on that, but I know they got ties to both. Both both gangs got to, or both groups got ties to blood sets. Mm -hmm. so like, I think it, it's more of like a separation of church and state type thing. Like, if you're gonna do like, uh, I can't remember what rapper it was, but they was like when they first got in the game, Ti pulled them to the side and was like, "Hey man, you can't do this shit. You you, you got to pick one." You know what I mean? Like, so like. Mm -hmm. I think it's a case of like when you're if you're gonna make a move to like actually change your circumstances and you actually gotta change that shit. You can't have do it, you can't be like, well, I'm gonna halfway do this and I'm gonna halfway do that. It gotta be like a complete lifestyle change. Otherwise, you're inviting the old shit into your new shit. Mm -hmm. And you're jeopardizing all the work that you're putting into this new enterprise or this new uh way of life. So it's like you got to just dive all the way the fuck in, man. That shit like quitting uh, cigarettes or anything that you addicted to. It's like, you got to like, just go. It mm -hmm. can't be a, well, let Cold me dab. Cause as long as you dabbling, you're going to keep on picking up that bullshit that you trying to get away from. It, yeah, it's, yeah. Sure, it's, it's inevitable. 
because you ain't even got to be the culprit. Like you could be the dude that's, I made it, I'm chilling, but I'm still hanging with all of the niggas that's active. So when their beef come to my studio, my name is the one that's on that shit. So it's like, you you gotta go. You gotta go all the way in or you, it, you can't do both. You know what I mean? Or you gotta make damn sure that the niggas you fucking with ain't doing shit. That they are that they are at least sitting their ass still, or they with you all the time, so they can't do nothing. Stupid. But if anything go wrong, you running the risk of like that shit coming right back to you and your name the big mm-hmm. name. So you definitely gonna go because they gonna want to make mm-hmm. the example out. Too many times have older cats in the game who have slipped up and made the same mistakes trying to try to school these young cats who are catching these indictments. And they gave them the brush off the shoulder of the, uh-huh, okay, OG, the, mm-hmm, all right, uh, and y'all in the same situation now because you chose not to listen. Young people, when someone older chooses just to try to help you out and not try to pressure you into the advice, listen to it. Listen to it. When you see yourself starting to be in that path that they warned you about, let that advice ring loud in your head, man. Ain't nobody okay. perfect. <laughs> nobody in this world is perfect. We've all made mistakes. But the, the, the smart thing is when someone advises you past your mistake to take that advice. It's easier said than done. Yes, that is. But when it's the advice to get that bag over being in the streets, that should be easy advice taken. Don't let the allure or the streets take you away from your big ass bag that you getting by being in the studio. We we see it happen too many damn times. You got one foot in and one foot out. They didn't open a studio door for you, but you want to have one foot in there trying to record, but one foot still in the mud out there trying to get it out. You already got it out the mud. Get your feet out. Stay out. <clears throat> you you ain't got to impress nobody in the hood no more. You it ain't about. It ain't about that, man. Everybody who keep trying to impress their people in the hood, they either go back home and get shot or they go back home and get caught up with some bullshit and they locked up. Just Stop trying to impress. Them, yeah. Stop trying to impress these other niggas out there. Let the person you try to impress be that person you see in the mirror. Because at the end of the day, it's what that person thinks that really, really matters. Because everybody in the world can think you that shit, but inside you can still feel like shit. Impress yourself with your goals and the shit you're doing out there. Stop trying to press these niggas in the streets, man. Because their opinions and what they thinking of y'all is getting y'all young black men locked the fuck up for what? That locked bag you got. Up, won't let that, them that, that, that big ass bag, that bag thug got. They ain't helping him right now. He's still in the same jail everybody else is down there. Mm-hmm. That, that big ass bag loot your head. He been in jail for a while. That bag ain't really doing too much. You may be getting some extra commentary or whatever, but you ain't got your freedom. They say we ain't really that free out here, but we are a lot more free out here than they are in there. I have the freedom to do what the hell I want to do as long as it's within my means. You can have the means in there and still can't fucking do it. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't see the allure of the streets, man. I'm sorry, when I was young, yeah, it bl- I, I, we all get blinded by the shit at some time. But God damn it, my vision came back and I saw the light, the real light. Once you have the bag and you have the ability to get out the streets, stay the fuck out the streets. Man, I'm telling Learn your you, lesson. Man. Listen to these OGs that made it out and like, damn. Don't nobody really want to be in the streets, man. They ain't the place to be. The thing is, if you jumping off the porch, jump off the porch to get out, to get in, to get out. You don't jump off the porch to just be in it, just be like, yep, we here. We got rap careers now. We getting bags on bags. We going on tour, but we still here. Yeah. Hell no, man. That don't make no sense to me. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, I, I'm a very, but I'm also a very much like personality. Like I'm, I'm either all in or all out. Like I don't really like teetering. So mm-hmm. I, I feel like, yeah, if, if you're going to, the, the dual life shit is killing them though, cause uh, 
Hey, that hip hop police shit, like the regular police is gonna get your ass if you just out here doing dumb shit and you around people yeah. doing dumb shit and you know it's dumb shit. So like just choose the dumb shit. Like if that's gonna be the route, just go that route fully and be successful at that. But you ain't gonna be successful at both and last. One of mm-hmm. them, one of them is gonna capsize at some point. So pick which one and ride that bit. Like pause. Like, but pick pick one and you know, do what the fuck you supposed to do, man. Kind of feel like by the time Wallow was telling Young Thug, "Hey, calm that shit down," well, they were already days. on them. Oh, the feds already had what they needed. Yeah. <clears throat> they were already on them. They, they was already on the way to them. They they he, that was that was a moot point at that at that period. Mm-hmm. That's why he made that face that whole time. Like, damn, that nigga's right. That shit happening right now. Damn. That part. Indeed. You yeah. don't see it because it's too damn late. That shit's irritating as fuck. You got mm-hmm. all this damn talent. You got all this money, all this talent, all, all these advantages, and you want to be stupid. Dumb as hell. Fucking you. And now all you can do is sit and sit and sit in jail and think. Well, Damn man, I I got all this money. Damn. No, nigga, you don't have access to your money because the government's probably frozen your assets. Indeed. Mm-hmm. Now your access have, now your access have affected those you supposedly taken care of. Supposedly were supposed to be taken care of. That ain't gangster. Not at all. It, it ain't. I, I I definitely understand once again. I definitely understand being in the streets. Cool. You do what you do. But once you get that bag. Cool. You still got people in the streets? Cool. Provide opportunities for them not to have to be there. Don't keep them there. Because if you allow them to stay there, how much do you really care about that situation? You don't. You just want to have a nigga in the streets so you can be around him and make yourself feel that much better about yourself. Mm-hmm. You get the bag, man. Get your <laughs> niggas out of the street. Provide opportunities. Create jobs, nigga. You need security, right? Don't just have your boy chill around you. Create jobs. Put them on a salary. Get them, help them create skills so they can be bosses too. Yeah. yeah. Bosses create bosses. Bosses don't create employees, man. But also knowing to let a motherfucker go when you're giving them that opportunity and he ain't take. Like if you exactly. if a homeboy hang around and he still want to do, he still want to hit the block every day, even though you you got him set up as a, as a role manager or some shit and you teaching them how to, you know what I'm saying, manage talent and shit and he don't want to do it. Like, well, Hey man, know know how to cut bait and be like, hey bro, I'll come back to get you when you ready. You holler at me. In the meantime, I gotta do it. Mm-hmm. I gotta make sure that you are ready. That it's still a foundation for you to come to. And that's that's really what it comes down to. Like, if you gonna be the boss and all that shit, like, think about that shit when you make your decisions. Like, your decisions and, and the environment you keep is gonna determine whether or not you're able to pay for bail or buy a lawyer or create an opportunity so that when your homeboy is ready, he can come to you. You know what I'm saying? If you, if you fucked up, then everybody fucked up. Now the whole shit. Right. You know what? If they stupid enough to get in these shit, fuck them. They stupid enough to get in these stupid ass shit, fuck them. What they should do, you you get in that bag and you, you get indicted, you guilty. All your funds, all your money gets liquidated and goes to goes to a charity. Fuck it. Cause you won't try to do the right thing when your money you was out. So we're gonna do the right thing when your money since your stupid ass does, chose to be stupid. Put it to the diabetic research, put it to cancer research, put you, put all that money to something. Let's let's use the means to find a fucking cure. You wanna be stupid enough? We gonna thank you. We definitely gonna thank you. You gonna be behind <laughs> bars, we're gonna thank your dumb ass. Somebody else gonna make a record about all that money you help you can find a cure with, but your dumb ass gonna be behind bars. But you still want to be in the streets when you was getting that bag, <laughs> bag over the streets, man, bag over streets, bos nigga, bag over streets, boss. Indeed, man, I, I I couldn't have said it better, man. Uh, prayers for these young brothers. Uh, hopefully some can uh, reach out to them and uh, hopefully things give them a second chance so they can actually do something right. But uh, if not, man, hey man, like. Yo, we see these oh, trade ranks coming as, as a public. What we can do is stop, like, 
reinforcing these dudes to do the stupid shit. Like when you see an artist that you fuck with, if you want him to be around so that you can continue to fuck with his music, like hype him up when he doing the right shit and don't give him no praise when he doing the crazy shit that's going to get him, that's going to take him away from the streets. Like that's the best thing we could do as a public. Like we also got to be responsible and just, you know, Stop supporting the fuck shit sometimes. Like if you see somebody like help help them in the, whatever way you can. But if they not listening to the tweets and the petitions and just go ahead and like listen with your silence. Like when they do dumb shit, don't get that shit no response. Only respond when they doing shit that's gonna actually like keep them around. That's the, that, that's the best thing you can do. And if you are OG around these niggas, man, put your arm around them and like, if, if you got their ear, use that to your advantage and, and use that and, and Give them, give them some good advice, man. Something that's going to keep them around. But this shit getting crazy. And it ain't got nothing to do with no hip-hop elites. It's just people doing crazy shit. 